All right, welcome. Uh, I just went ahead and uh, started the recording, so the folks who join us outside of class time will will have a good start. Um, okay, so today I actually want to start with kind of a, a new topic, and that is what the uh, College Board calls uh, Big Idea Number Two. Big Idea Number One. Uh, is actually uh, the idea that computing is creative, okay? Uh, that's something that we'll just get because, you know, I'll ask you to write programs. I'm pretty sure you'll convince yourself very, very quickly that uh, trying to, uh, to write programs is a difficult thing and that it, you know, requires your creativity, not just raw technical skills. So, uh, so that's kind of how I'll deal with big idea one. But big idea two is a bit more subtle, and that's uh, about abstraction, okay? And um, so I'm just going to start by asking you guys, uh, what do you think of when you think of the word abstraction? Uh, what comes to mind? Making something abstract, yeah, but what does that mean? <laughs> Any ideas? Okay, so creating something that is abstract or transforming something to be more abstract. Uh, removal of detail, limiting the amount of details, making a program with least amount of context. Okay, uh, I actually like all of your answers. Uh, Joel, I especially like your answer because it's the least abstract. It's the one that gives me the most information without hiding stuff. So uh, when we say that we're creating something that is abstract, I still have the question, what does that mean, right? Uh, removal of detail, living the amount of detail, that tells me what we mean. So, so I like that answer quite a bit. So um, can you give me an example using any of the programs we've done so far? Okay. Um, Hayden actually uh, brings up a second point that I, that I want to be able to come back to. So, so your job is that if we don't come back to it, bring it up again, okay? But uh, maybe making something abstract could be something that's not easily understandable, okay? So, so that's definitely something I want to uh, discuss. Uh, putting all the code on one sprite is possible. Uh, I don't know, okay? Um, like, for example, one of the uh, uh, programs that you guys did had two sprites, and actually having those two sprites, I think, made things better. So I'm not sure that's quite where we want to go, although you have that uh, disclaimer there, if possible. So, so maybe, maybe we do have it. Uh, art? Are you thinking like abstract art? Yes, abstract art. Um, anybody seen abstract art? Okay. Uh, what makes it abstract? No. <laughs> Not easily understandable without context. I think that's true. Uh, I don't know if you had this experience, but I've been in a museum looking at something going, what the heck? How did this even get here? Um, lack of an explanation of the artist's process, maybe, okay? Uh, I find that some artists are actually overly um, explaining and others like to keep things close to their vest, right? So, so it's hard to tell. Um, I do want to say, what's the opposite of abstract art? Yes, there's a class. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Uh, figurative art. Oh, wow. That's a great word. Figurative. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so that's the opposite. And what does that mean? What does, what does the word figurative mean in this context? Uh, I may make it overly simple by saying this, but to me, to me, uh, figurative art, and remember, you're talking to a computer guy, not to an artist, okay? But to me, figurative art means that it's uh, representational. If I look at something, you know, I can recognize it from the real world, right? So an apple actually, well, it looks like an apple, uh, or, um, or uh, you know, a desk will look like a desk and so on, right? Things look like what they're supposed to look like. Uh, in abstract art, that's not always true, right? So, for example, Monet was maybe more interested in um, in uh, in how light interacted with objects than it was in the actual shape of the object, right? So he would paint the same thing at different times of the day to get different lighting effects, and he was more interested in trying to give you a quick impression of uh, the way the uh, the painting, I mean, the way the light looked at that particular time, which meant that he had to paint very quickly and just get the, uh, the outline, so to speak. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, others, all I can say is they, they became even more and more separated from reality, right? More and more abstract. Uh, so that's, uh, that's definitely part of it. I think that's, that's good insight into using the word in a non-computing way, okay? Um, I like this idea of saying, how do we hide information, okay? Um, okay, so, so I, he, we, here we have the idea that we have some module, some block in Snap, right, that works. When we know that it works, we've tested it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. When we tell it to do something, it goes off and it does something. And, uh, and we don't have to look inside of the program to be able to understand exactly how it does it. So let me ask you a question. This is actually a hard question, and I want us to kind of walk our ways through it. But uh, suppose, suppose that we have a sprite, and a sprite is looking at, let's say, in a direction that's at 30 degrees above the positive x-axis, OK? And uh, we say, move 100. And let's say the depend is down, OK? Um, that's just one block, right? Move a hundred steps. What exactly happens when you do that? Who can give me an idea? In fact, are we having problems with the uh, uh, headsets? No. No. Okay. You did. Okay, I'm right, just making sure. Okay, all right. Uh, actually, before I even do that, let's just start with a simpler question, okay? Let's again think of the sprite, but this time let's think of it that it's at an angle of zero degrees to the positive x-axis, right? Just zero degrees. So it's actually looking directly along the x-axis. And I say move 100. Uh, what exactly happens? It moves to the right 100 units. That is true, right? Um, and notice that that's a, that's a pretty great answer. It's actually pretty abstract because it says what's supposed to happen. It doesn't tell you how, right? Um, we also see another answer here, plus 100 to x coordinate. So we're taking whatever the x coordinate is, and now we're adding 100 to that. I want you to appreciate how much less abstract that answer is because uh, in the previous answer, that was scary. In the previous answer, uh, we moved to the right 100 units. Um, we, uh, we don't even know that it's in X and Y coordinates, okay? Uh, all we know is that it's going to move, and by how much, right? Uh, actually saying X coordinate goes up by 100 says something more. It says that we think of it as being in X and Y coordinates. Quick aside. Can anybody tell me a different way of, uh, of talking about points? 
on the plane than X and Y coordinates? I was just trying to get a, a feel. Uh, in uh, uh, I believe the first time you'll see this will, will be in calculus, but it could be in pre-calculus. Uh, you might learn about um, about uh, polar coordinates, where you use r and theta to describe the points in the plane. So, so that would be a different way of doing it. So you see, you're assuming x and y coordinates because you're familiar with those, right? But it could actually be something different. Right? It could be r theta. And I simply point that out to show you that, uh, that that's the value of abstraction. You don't actually need to know that, okay? Complex plane, people tend to use R and theta there too, okay? That's actually pretty big there. Um, okay, so, um, so that's how we do the uh, moving across the x-axis. What about uh, what I started with, which is uh, 30 degrees above the x-axis? Then what do you have to do, okay? Uh, we got to start from Maxwell earlier that says uh, we calculate the distance moved in the x and y axis using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? Right? Now, what is the distance that it's going to move? C squared, that's what the Pythagorean tells us, right? Um, although it actually should be 100 because we said move 100 steps, right? Uh, there's lots of different ways to get a hundred, uh, but I want the precise way that gets me 30 degrees above the x-axis, right? So there's lots of choices of A and B, right? Or changing X, changing Y, that will get me a hundred steps. But how do I get the exact one that gets it to me in 30 degrees? That's a tough question, okay? Anybody know the answer? Anybody taken trig? Pre-calculus? Okay. Um, to actually do that, you're going to need to know about sine and cosine. Okay. So sine of 30 over 100. Uh, actually, you just want sine of 30 uh, times 100. Joel, I see I've been told that you're writing a long answer. Um, how close are you? I really want to see it. Pretty close, okay. Not sure who just joined us, but welcome. That is true, okay. Okay, now we say we're gonna move about 50 units upward and 80 units to the right, okay? Uh, that is absolutely spot on. But now I want you to remember the following. The screen that you're looking at, okay? And I know you're all looking at a screen of some sort. The screen that you're looking at is made up of a whole bunch of rows and columns, right? So uh, I don't even know what my resolution is, but let's say it's uh, 1120 by 900. It's a pixel plane, that's a good, good phrase for it. And so what I have is a whole bunch of little pixels or little dots with different colors. That's, that's the reality, right? There is no sprite, there is no line, there is no pen. Uh, 1920 by 1080, nice, that's a nice uh, monitor. Um, but, but, I still need to pretend like I have a sprite that moves with a pen that leaves a mark on the uh, screen, right? So, uh, so now we know where it's supposed to move, but how is it actually going to light the dots between here and there? Right? I mean, let's say that we start at the center, which is zero, zero. What do we choose to, to color next? Hmm, right? That's, again, that's a really, really hard question. And I can give you some obvious answers. I can move, you see, there's only, 
two real obvious answers. If I move one in the x direction, right, I can either stay, I'm, uh, yeah, I can either stay at the same level in the y direction or I can go up by one, right? I want to go up by 30 degrees, not 45 degrees, which means the same movement in the x and the y, but 30, which means I'm going to move more in the x direction than in the y direction, okay? So, so the only answers that make sense is move zero up or move one up for every one x over that you move, right? Okay, those are the only two things that make sense. Um, so if I always move zero, I draw a straight line that's horizontal. That's the wrong answer. If I always move up by one when I move right by one, then I make a 45 degree angle, which is also not what I want. I want 30 degrees. So what that tells you is that sometimes I want to move zero, sometimes I want to move one. Okay? Um, the details of that are more complicated than, they, than, than I really want to go into, okay? Uh, that's not what I'm trying to teach you today. What I want to teach you today is just this very important point, number one. Actually, moving a sprite by 30 degrees is really hard, okay? That is a really hard thing to do. Number two, you guys shouldn't care, right? Because you simply have a block that you say, move by 100, and boom, it moves, right? You don't need to know or care how that actually happens. And uh, that's really liberating, right? I mean, that's just great, because we can write code that does great things. And, uh, and so what if? if uh, is really, really complicated that, okay? So, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the point of abstraction, right? You guys benefit from the abstraction that Snap provides because you can create pictures by moving a sprite without needing to know all the details of how sprites actually move, okay? Does that make sense to you? Right? So, so I mean, that's one thing. I really want you to, to, to understand, okay? So, so at this point, I'm gonna keep my promise. I don't always keep them, and so that's why you have to, you know, keep me honest and say, hey, you said we we're gonna come back to this. But I'm, I'm actually remembering today. So I wanna go back to the point we made earlier, okay? In art, sometimes when you look at an abstract painting, it's actually really hard to tell what's happening, right? Because it's so abstract that you can't really relate anymore, okay? In uh, things like mathematics, okay, sometimes, you know, uh, you'll be listening to something and you'll be talking about concepts that are so abstract, so high level, so removed from reality that you won't have any way of relating to it. And when that happens, it's really hard to understand what's going on, right? So that can be a challenge in some classes. The material is uh, really, really abstract. Yeah, yeah, in, in a sense, they can be too abstract, right? Um, I mean, there's a reason that they teach you how to add before they teach you that addition is commutative, right? You know, because you actually need some experience with it before you're ready to make the jump and start learning algebra, right? So, so that's, a, that's a challenge when you have abstraction, right? Um, but in computing, we always use abstraction for one reason only, and that is to make life easier for ourselves, okay? So very rarely in computing, and I do know some people who do it, okay? But very rarely in computing do we add abstraction to make life harder, okay? Most of the time we're simplifying, we're managing complexity, we're trying to bring it down, okay? And the way that we do that is by hiding details, right? Because what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the winner here? If you hide details, then there's less things you have to know to be able to understand what's going on, okay? No. Sounds exciting. No. Is anybody Cody Wilcox? All right, we're back. So, um, so anyway. Um, I really want you to, to kind of take this and, and start living it. And that is that we want to use abstraction everywhere that we can so that we can simplify our code, okay? So, uh, so part of the, uh, the activities that we're gonna be doing uh, a little bit today and also next week and so on 
is uh, uh, working with abstraction in programming to kind of drive that point home. Okay. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about abstraction in a different form, not just, um, uh, yeah, creating the blocks in Snap creates some abstraction. Um, yeah, you get a gold star, okay? I'm, I'm fresh out, so I can't give you one. But uh, that is absolutely right. And in fact, that's what I should have been saying, right? Is that creating blocks is Snap's primary mechanism for providing abstraction, okay? There's others, but that's definitely the primary one. So absolutely. And, and I think you saw that when we did the, um, uh, the uh, pinwheel project, right? That depending on how you call the function, it could create polygons or it could create spirals and so on. And so uh, it was really very abstract, right? And uh, that's, uh, that's very nice. Okay, um, the, the other type of abstraction that I want to discuss is, is, is really a different way of, of abstracting. And um, let me say the following. Let's say that you want to get a good grade in your math class. Uh, what do you have to do? Homework, any kind of homework, work hard and study, any kind of study, practice, any kind of practice, go to any class. Ah, now we're getting somewhere, right? You got to do math to do well on your math homework, okay? Learn what the teacher wants. That is false. That doesn't work in college. Um, yeah, you got to do math. So everything that people said before that was true, you need to do your math homework. You need to study your math textbook. You need to do math problems and so on, right? Okay. Now, uh, what if you want to do well in your chemistry class? What do you have to do? I think it's pretty straightforward, right? You're going to have to study, right? But it needs to be chemistry homework. Yeah, you'll have to do chemistry experiments, right? You'll have to read your chemistry textbook, you'll, uh, chemistry whatever, right? You have to work on chemistry. Right now, here's the point where we take this different kind of abstraction, and I think it's very natural to all of you. And that is, what if you want to do well? Period. Right? Ah, then you're going to have to study whatever it is you want to do well at. You're going to have to do the problems in whatever it is you want to do well at. You want to have to go to class of whatever it is that you want to do well at, and so on. Right? So, so we have like a simple recipe for doing well in a class that actually works for any class. Right? So I've abstracted the secret to doing well in math, the secret to doing well in chemistry, the secret to doing well in, you know, English, and kind of combined them all into the secret to doing well in any class. You just have to do the work for that class. Right? Um, yeah, exactly. And, and by the way, you have to be motivated to do whatever it is that you don't want to do. I call that discipline, right? And, and that's a problem that we all have. I mean, trust me, there are things that I have to do that I have absolutely no desire to. And uh, I'm tough to do, right? I have to do them. So that's, uh, that's life. So, so yeah, that's, uh, all of those things apply, okay? So that's a different kind of abstraction. So there's kind of an abstraction that says I'm hiding details, right? And there's another kind of abstraction that says I am generalizing. Right? I, instead of hiding details, I'm looking for similarities between two different kinds of things. Right? So uh, when I give you directions to come to my house, I don't actually need to know what kind of car you're driving. Right? You know, that's totally irrelevant. Um, and uh, I just got to tell you kind of what roads to take and assume that the rest is up to you and you can figure that kind of stuff out. Right? In fact, you can come in a bicycle. Right? And that's okay. Right, you can walk. That's okay, um, but uh, but because all of those are similar, the only thing that you need is the geographical directions. So that's another kind of abstracting that is very, very, very important. So we have two different kinds in programming. Number one is um, hiding details. Right. Number two is taking two things that are similar and kind of combining them using those similarities. Okay. Now, they're not completely unrelated, right? Um, like, for example, the way that you might uh, break 
on your bicycle might be using a handle brake, it might be using a pedal brake, it might be using something different, right? But we kind of think of all of those as just putting the brakes on the bicycle, right? And so I don't have to tell you which one of those to do. You know your bike, you know what to do. And, and by the way, I don't have to tell you, using a rock, that's the hard way. That's definitely the hard way. Um, the, uh, if you do something uh, with a different kind of vehicle, car, truck, whatever, again, I can still talk about the concept of braking, and you know what I'm talking about, right? Although if you, for example, try to take a commercial driver's license uh, to drive one of the big rigs, okay, um, those guys really have to think about braking much more deeply than the rest of us do, right? So, so that's, uh, that's what's going on. All right. I do not recommend trying to break a bicycle with the bridge of your nose. That it's a, that's a, that's a bad abstraction. Okay. So, so don't do it. Um, okay. Now, um, I want you to keep in mind those two kinds of abstractions. And now I want you to kind of, um, um, think about that when you're programming. Okay. And when you do at this point, the only choice you have will be create a new block. Okay, when you create that block, give it a good name that describes what it does, and don't let anybody know or care about how it does it. Okay, so that's uh, that's the way that I want you to think about abstraction. And as you do that, I want you to to talk to yourself. Okay, um, about how is this helping me make my program easier to understand? Okay, if it doesn't make it easier to understand. Um, that we don't want to do it, okay? Uh, to answer Joe's question, are we gonna get into object-oriented programming in this class? Um, I'll be flat out honest. The answer to that is I do not know, okay? Um, object-oriented programming is something that you can do in Snap, and uh, uh, it's actually super cool, but it's really complex. So I don't know if we're gonna get that far. At the rate at which we're going, I think the answer is yes, okay? But, uh, but this is a new experience for you guys, and it's a new experience for me too. So I can't quite predict what's gonna happen uh, down the road. I'm kind of committing to making sure that we cover everything in the AP curriculum, which by the way, does not involve object-oriented programming, okay? But, uh, but I really wanna get to it, so we'll see, okay? All right, any other kind of uh, questions about abstraction? Hope we can too, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> All right, um, here's, what, uh, here's what I want us to do uh, the rest of this uh, period. Uh, I want you to look at, uh, well, first of all, if you haven't finished uh, Unit 1, Lab 5, finish Unit 1, Lab 5, okay? Um, I have to apologize, I haven't given you guys feedback on your code, that's simply because not everybody's been able to submit because of our problems registering with UW. Okay, so I'm waiting for that to get resolved. Um, but the university schedule, it should have gotten resolved this Monday because that's the last day to add and drop a class. But that hasn't happened. Same reason I haven't done the videos. I'm not so much worried about grading them as I am about having everybody see them. Okay, but, uh, but they're not all submitted. They can't all be submitted because uh, let's see, today I have 16 of you here. I know there's only 11 people in the class. Okay. So it's a, it's a uh, principle called the pigeonhole principle that says that not all of you are signed up in the class yet, okay? So I'm, I'm kind of hoping, oh, here's one more that shows up. So now I got 17, right? But still the same number of people signed up. So I'm trying to get that result before I can actually give you meaningful feedback on anything because I don't want to leave anybody behind, okay? But, um, but uh, so if you haven't actually submitted or finished unit one, lab five, go ahead and do that, okay? Uh, when you're done, um, by the way, hold, I hope you mean hold with a D, okay? And uh, if that is the case, let us, uh, let us know because there's a good chance that that's something really stupid. Like uh, they put everybody on hold because of lack of immunization records, okay? Until they realize, hey, those guys aren't coming to the university. They can't infect anybody, so we don't need their immunization records. But it's like, yes, excellent. Let's keep moving, right? So we are moving as fast as we can. I need to know if anybody's stuck 
And if you don't raise your hand and tell us I'm stuck, we're not solving the problem, okay? And we do need to do that. Anyway, uh, uh, after you're done with Unit 1, Lab 5, move to Unit 2, Lab 1, okay? And uh, next time, I want to talk about what that has to do with abstraction, because it may not be immediately obvious, okay? All right, um, that's it. So go ahead and start working in that uh, project. I'm here for any questions. I will pause the recording so that the folks that are watching it outside don't just look at us. Uh, well, we're not talking to each other. And, uh, and like I said, just let me know if uh, any questions and so on. All right.